Hello, I'm Mo Malik, and I am here with David Robin Singh. Hello, David. How you doing, Mo? It's great to be here. Good, thank you. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, my name is David Robin Singh. Uh, you don't want to know all my full names because I always say that if I was a politician, I'd need like six or eight buses just to fit my entire name on because you got David, my three middle names, and my last name. So, you know, uh, I'm known as David Squeaky Wheels uh, as uh, my comedic persona. That's who I, uh, I associate myself with on stage. And uh, I'm a second year student at the University of Windsor, and I'm 20 years old, and I was born and raised in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, when did you first start uh, performing stand-up comedy? Uh, my early roots really, really date back to uh, early childhood because I was always a very shy and timid kid. Uh, I didn't really say too much around people. I was always very apprehensive. Uh, but when I was uh, about four years old, I always uh, got a rush out of doing things in front of people, in front of my family. By doing things, I mean like performing skits or doing voices and impersonations because that's how I figured I could get attention and that's how I figured I could uh, gain more acceptance. So when I was about four or five years old, uh, I'd always go up in front of family functions and family gatherings and, uh, you know, I'd say, attention, attention, and uh, I'd get everybody's attention, all my relatives and my grandparents and my mothers, and uh, I'd do different voices that I saw on TV, um, off of cartoons or whatever. So basically, my early interactions uh, were that I used comedy as a form of uh, fitting in, as a way to kind of fit it into kind of... Uh, not necessarily dismiss my disability, but to kind of leave it in a sh you know, behind in the shadows, to not make it the emphasis of uh, who I am. How did you get your start in uh, the stand-up comedy area? Well, basically, like I said, my, my beginnings came from that early, uh, that early time period. So I started to do the skits in front of my family, but I liked cartoons. I was a big Bugs Bunny fan, <laughs> uh, big Roadrunner guy. And uh, also, I really liked Steve Urkel. I'd emulate Steve Urkel, I'd wear the pants up high in class, uh, I, I'd dress like him, I'd, I'd do his catchphrases. And, uh, you know, so uh, like I said, from an early age, comedy was always around me, I just never really realized it. And it was sort of a way for me to fit in, uh, in you know, around my classmates and around the, the kids, because I couldn't always go out and do things physically, like I couldn't always go and play uh, and run around or do stuff like that. But uh, if you want to know where my specific start was, it was in high school. Uh, around the time uh, of Chappelle's show. And because uh, I'm, I'm a big Dave Chappelle fan and I'm a big Russell Peters fan. So those guys were at, there's the, you know, that was at the peak of his show. And uh, I'd always watch his sketches on TV and I'd always try to emulate them because I thought they were cutting edge. And it's, it was comedy unlike I'd ever heard before because it was very in your face, very uh, hardcore and very raw. So I'm thinking, you know what, I could do something like that. I got my voices and everything. And uh, I started when I was 15 at my high school. Uh, we had this thing every month called Coffee House, which it was like a monthly talent show where you, you get poets and singers and, uh, you know, comedians. <laughs> and I was the first ever guy to do stand up there. And uh, it, the first time was atrocious. <laughs> <Let me just laughs> I, uh, I, I'm so glad I didn't film it because that was horrendous. Uh, I did four impressions and uh, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about being a stand-up comic? Um, that I get to tell the truth in a society that doesn't always let you be yourself, or a society that lets you that basically is is uh, prone to conformity. I guess influences conformity. When you're a stand-up comedian, you have a different perspective on the world, and I already have a different perspective be having a disability, uh, being a minority within a minority within a minority. So, yeah, I know that's a funny plan of words there. Uh, so I, I already have that perspective and what stand-up does is it gives you an outlet to kind of talk about all the things you see going on around you that nobody else can really understand or that a very select amount of people can understand. So when you're a comic, you have that unique opportunity, that unique ability to kind of critique the world or, or, tell, the world, or tell the world how you see it. And you kind of get a chance to hold up the mirror because that's kind of what Lenny Bruce did because I'm listening to more of the older underground comics like Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Bill Hicks, uh, you know, uh, and some of those guys. Because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, free speech. I believe that everybody should have the right to free speech. And, uh, you know, I, I you always know the expression, you got to know where you came from in order to know where you're going. So that's kind of what my research has been. Because I, I can't get enough of, of listening or watching stand-up. Like, that's kind of all I do. And, 
you know, I'm more interested in news now than I once was. Uh, so it's really just about achieving that balance and that it's more understanding yourself too. Uh, during this journey, I've really come to understand myself and I've really kind of come to terms with who I am a bit more. So if I was just a regular Joe working, you know, at a factory or whatever. Since you have a different perspective on life mm -hmm. and you try to bring that to the masses, mm. how does that go down? Are they receptive? Um, <laughs> that's the thing sometimes being a, a handicapped comedian or a disabled comedian is uh, a lot of the times people don't expect you to, uh, to kind of say some, some of the stuff you say. So as I get older, I, bec I find that I'm getting more raw and a bit edgier. So I can kind of say a, a few more crude things than I normally did when I first started. It, it's all about showing that you're no different from they, them. I mean, you are visibly, but you have to kind of make them comfortable around you because that's the way that they'll laugh. They have to kind of, they don't have to feel isolated in that sense. Uh, that's basically what I try to achieve with my act. I try to achieve that understanding. And, and you know, uh, when, it, when it comes down to it, my job is to make people laugh. So that's what I do. That's my number one priority. Um, I don't know. And like I said, I think that sometimes the jokes write themselves, you know, because stuff happens to me. And instead of moping about it or blaming people, I just come up with a bit or, you know, I try it out on people and see how it works. Right. Well, thank you for being on the show. Oh, yeah, it was my pleasure. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Massey, Massey High School, uh, everybody in my theater program, mom, grandma, uh, my buddy Koopy and uh, everybody else. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank this you. This is a uh, squeaky wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mo Malik and I'm here with David Robin Singh.